Hi, this is Patrick Jaszewski from Explorer's Kitchen. Today we're going to make an Easter cheese called Hrudka. We're going to make it two different methods. We've got a traditional method, which is boiling stovetop, and the other way we're going to try and develop a sous vide method of making this today. So stick around, let's make it together. Thanks again for joining me. We are making hrutka. Sometimes I've seen it called sirek or sirots. I hope my pronunciation is decent, but either way, we are gonna make it together and it's gonna taste fantastic. Hrutka is an Easter cheese that combined with just simple things. It's got eggs, milk, and uh, flavoring if you like. You can make it savory with some of the additions of chives or parsley or wild onion, pepper, things like that. I can make kind of a sort of savory version that I've heard is very good. I tend to like a sweet version myself, which has got vanilla extract in it and sometimes a little sugar. I've seen it both ways. And also there's a neutral method, which is just uh, no additional flavorings besides a little bit of salt. But however you make it, it's a delicious treat uh, right around Easter time. Even though I've got a Polish background, I didn't grow up with, with Rutka at all. Um, I, I didn't learn about it until a coworker of mine mentioned it to me a few years back and I made it at, myself at home. Once I tasted it, I've made it every year since. And in, in preparation for making this video, I gave my grandmother a call and, and to find out whether she ever made it in the past. And it turns out she did. She made it every year for her kids growing up. While she didn't tie it and hang it like I'm gonna be demonstrating, she weighed it down under a pot of water to help press out the liquid that you're gonna see as we're making this cheese. She would load up the kids in the car, bring their Easter baskets with their Easter cheese in it, as well as an Easter cheese bread and the kielbasa and everything else that they bring it to the church on Holy Saturday and get it blessed. So that was the tradition my father's family grew up with and it's kind of fun to have even found that tradition in a different way and share it with you. So let's get into how to make this. We're gonna start with the sous vide method just cause it's gonna take a little longer and we're hoping that it's gonna go smoothly. Uh, this is not something I've tried before but I think it'll go pretty smoothly at 180 degrees to help cook the eggs in the milk. So to start with that, we've got a dozen eggs. Let's get those cracked and beat up a little bit. And then we'll add our milk, add our salt, and get it right into the sous vide. Regardless of which method you make, you're gonna need a dozen eggs and a quart of milk to get this recipe prepared. We'll start by cracking the eggs and whipping them up a little bit to break up the yolks. And then we'll add our milk and get them into the sous vide bath. These are some great eggs that I got from a local free range egg producer. Very fresh. That's why I've got the different colors. They almost look like Easter eggs themselves. I mean, look at this, this nice little blue. The brown eggs are nice as well. They don't taste any different. I mean, honestly, it's, it's just the breed of the chickens they've got. After seeing what chickens go through, I'd always prefer to get a good pasture raised chicken egg. Give them a chance to get out there, run around, eat some bugs, have a good life, instead of being stacked on top of each other. Got our eggs all cracked. You can whisk them. I like to use the immersion blender just because it's quick and easy. Then we can add our quart of milk. Add one teaspoon of salt. Since I'm making the sweet version, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of vanilla. I like the vanilla in there and my coworker also puts vanilla in his, although he doesn't add sugar. This one's gonna be a little sweeter, so I'm gonna add just a quarter cup of sugar, which is not a ton when you think of the fact that it's got uh, a quart of milk and a dozen eggs in there. We're gonna quick incorporate this. And that's all that's needed there. Our sous vide bath is set for 180 over here. We don't wanna use plastic bags for this. As the temperature rises above, we'll say 160 and above, I, I like to put them into something a little bit more substantial, something I know won't break on me once they, the seams get hot. I'm gonna be using just these quart mason jars. I'm gonna load them up with this liquid and we'll throw them in the bath. I'm guessing that it's gonna probably take about an hour and a half at 180 to get them up to temperature where we're gonna see the whey separate from the curd. We'll give that a try and I'll let you know how it goes and we can tweak it as needed. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I got him in the water bath. Like I said, I guess an hour and a half, we'll find out. Alexa, set a timer for 90 minutes. One hour and 30 minutes, starting now. Now let's make it the traditional method. We've got our same quart of water, got our same dozen eggs, same ingredients. We're gonna cook it in this Dutch oven to separate the curds from the whey. We're gonna crack our eggs like before. We're gonna hit them with the immersion blender like before. Add that to our milk. Add one teaspoon of salt. One tablespoon of vanilla. And on this one, I'm gonna skip the sugar. Let's get this blended up. And into our Dutch oven for heating. We wanna use a nice gentle heat when we're heating this up because we don't want to stick and burn and scorch on the bottom. We also wanna be stirring constantly. So grab a spoon and take your time with it. Got it about a medium heat right now. One nice thing about this cooking method is you'll know when it's time to be done. You'll see the curds separate from the whey and the whey will be fairly clear. It should be pretty obvious when you get to that point. Just keep stirring constantly so you don't scorch the bottom of your pan. You can certainly use a double boiler for this if you have one big enough. In fact, that's probably the best way to do it. One thing I forgot to mention before was with the milk. Use whole milk if, because that's where the flavor's at. One reason you might want to use that sous vide method of cooking is because then you don't have to sit here and stir and worry about scorching the bottom. It's easy. It all takes care of itself. Once you reach that certain temperature, the whey will separate. You can see it's separating here. But it's still not fully clear yet. That means we haven't reached the full separation. So we gotta do it a little bit longer. So one nine. Okay. Should start to look like scrambled eggs, and you can see that the liquid here is running fairly clear. That means we're done. We pour it into a pot, lined with a colander, with a clean cloth, drain it. The reason you want to drain it lined like this is because you can actually use that liquid that comes out of it, the whey, for something else. You can use it in a bread called Pasca, which, if I have time, I'll record that one too. Ideally, you'll start to press this as soon as it's cool enough to actually handle. It's very hot still. Now that this is cool enough to handle a little bit, just squeeze, twist. Well, it looks like I've got the bulk of the liquid out. I'm gonna tie it up and hang it. Simple notch. I'm just gonna hang this right over the sink here from one of the knobs on the on the counter. You can hang there for about five to eight hours overnight if you want to drip. It'll, that way it'll, it's nice because it'll fall right into the sink, no problem. Now let's measure how much liquid we got out of this. It looks like we got pretty much two and a half cups, which is perfect because we only need two cups for our recipe for Pashka. I think I will make some Pashka after all. Once the cheese is done hanging, we're gonna refrigerate it just to cool and we can slice the serve. It's been an hour and a half at 180 degrees sous vide. So now it's time to pull it out and see if it's curdled the way we want it to be. So we can separate the curds from the whey and then get it straining just like our other one. These are hot. Look at this. That is super easy. Now we're gonna pull up the edges just like before. Tied it up the same way as the last time. Twisting tight until all the liquid came out. Uh, until it got to a just a small drips at that point. Tied tightly with string and now we're gonna hang it along with the other one. Like I mentioned before, give it about five to eight hours just to cool and set, and then transfer it to the fridge, wrap it up in plastic wrap, let it cool completely, chill, slice, and enjoy. Now that we've finished draining the liquid from our cheese, we can cut it open, wrap it in plastic, and let it chill in the fridge. I do 
nice ball of cheese. Mm, smells good. Number one. Now it's the traditionally made one. Let's see what the sous vide one looks like. Here is the cheese made sous vide. It's already, you can tell, a lot looser. Not quite as dense. Set both of these in the fridge overnight. Just chill, slice them tomorrow. Our Easter cheese is finished setting overnight in the fridge. It's firmed up quite a bit. Now it's time to slice and have a taste. This is the one I made with the traditional method. And this one is the one I made with sous vide. I can tell right away that it's a lot less dense. We'll let's see if they taste any different. So let's start by tasting the traditional method. This is the one we're trying to measure up against. It's got some good firmness to it. Mm. It's good. In, in this recipe, I didn't use the, the sugar, just the vanilla. You want some of this? This is just the vanilla, the eggs, the salt, and the milk. Now, let's try the sous vide one. It's a lot more tender. It's been very custardy. It's delicious, so flavor is really good. And this one's got a little bit of the sugar in it. It's almost a little bit more like a dessert. Both taste really good. I'd make them just a slight change to the sous vide version. Next time I make it, I'm gonna heat up the temperature a little bit further. When I dipped the thermometer into the traditional one, it seemed like it was separating right around 190, 195, rather than 180 like I was thinking before. So I would heat this up just a little bit longer for sous vide in the future. One thing I really liked about the sous vide version was that it didn't stick to the bottom. The traditional one, I didn't think I'd have any scorching. In fact, I hadn't had any scorching in the past. But this time it actually, I looked in the bottom of my pan when, I, when it was all said and done, it's a little bit scorched on the bottom. So a double boiler would solve that problem for you. Actually, you could probably even boil water like I did, put them in the mason jars and drop that in. It's the same concept. That's another option for you. And actually, if you just look at the size of these two, use the same amount of milk, same amount of eggs. Sous vide one's quite a bit bigger, just because it still has some more of that liquid still into it. That it still tastes fantastic. Regardless, you can't go wrong. This is Easter cheese, fruit cut, let me know if you decide to make this. I'm curious what your recipe is. If you have a savory variation or another method, how do you make it? Let me know down in the comments below how you make it. Happy Easter to you and your family. Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe and give us a like and let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much. Take care. How's that look? Smell good? That smell good? Say bye, Daisy. Bye bye. Regardless of which method you make, you're gonna need a dozen eggs and a quart of milk. Oh, spill a little bit there.